we were getting quite frustrated when we went to um, Forbidden Planet and stuff, weren't we? By the fact that we were spending all this money on comics and travel. Uh, and, and, food. and food and everything else um, and then actually we never really got a chance to read the comics because we were always so busy we thought well, how nice would it be if you could sit down uh, and, and read a comic and have a coffee when you buy it the first thing I remember was walking out of Forbidden Planet and going I'd really like a comic book shop <laughs> and then all of a sudden we were open Mine, mine is the uh, the retro games console that we have over there. Um, the one that we have in the in the cupboard has uh, eight thousand games on it. Uh, it's an emulator. Personally, I'm all about the comic books. I like I like to read graphic novels. I like to read into my comics. I think you never know which way the curveball is going to go. I think it's a very strong point to say that our community is our focus point yeah. because we know from being geeks ourselves and stuff that you can be quite isolated and having nowhere to go um, and or possibly having somewhere to go but not being uncomfortable there so we make sure that any money that we do get from them goes back into them to providing a new games console, new TVs to play on, things to do like the convention and stuff um, just to keep the geek train going really. So King Kong's going to look like uh, Gotham City when you first walk in. When you walk through into the main auditorium, there's a big area where we have uh, games developers, uh, big gaming tables, um, there's a Jurassic Park setting at the back there as well. Um, and there's a lot of theatre that we want to use in there because it is a theatre, so it would be rude not to use the lighting and the sound effects and all the projections and stuff like that and really make it a great experience when you're in there as well. 